Hey guys and gals in TSP and T-SPAS land, I wanted to uh, talk to you about these uh, floating row covers from Tierra Garden that I'm trialing. And uh, I've had them long enough, I definitely can recommend them. <clears throat> this is the giant size. They're a little over 11 feet long. This is a 12 foot bed, so you can see they're about 11 foot, right about 11 foot. They say 11.2 or something, but um, they're about two foot wide, which long term, if I wanna keep using them, uh, that's kind of nice because I can cover a whole row uh, with just two of them because these are four foot beds. I don't think I'll ever garden this entire space through winter, but having a small area uh, or maybe even, you know, I don't know, maybe the front side of each of the four uh, beds during winter or certain plants I might use them to extend the season with um, or to get things off the ground a little bit early. Uh, like broccoli and stuff this year uh, this is soil we brought in it's a mixture of topsoil and compost and and even though it is about 40% uh, compost it's not really it's not really full of life yet it's cold out this is fresh compost from a, a mass composting facility so I didn't really <clears throat> want to cover a lot of this um, out of the gate because my grandson and I are going to be heaping a whole bunch of sweet feed which makes a great fertilizer, soil inoculant, feed microbes on here and covering all of this with black plastic until spring planting time. Um, that means I'm not gonna be able to cover these two strips, but I'll cover right up to them. I'll put the sweet feed around everything and uh, we'll just mix it in when it comes to main planting season. But I, I needed a place to try these and, and this has seemed like the best place. I have two of the options here. This one is poly and this one is fleece. These are both kind of wintertime uh, items. The beauty of the fleece is you can water right through it or when it rains, water goes right through it. And you'll see when I pull these up for you that the ground around that looks dry, even though there's plenty of moisture because we had rains recently and of course water moves. Um, and uh, so you got that, but it doesn't of course have as much thermal gain when the sun's out as the poly does. So if you, want, you need to water your poly, you're gonna have to pull it back and water it. Now, I know what you're thinking. This looks like a pain in the butt um, when you need to work on things. Trust me, what I'm about to show you is pretty easy, and it's easier if I had two hands, but I don't have two hands. All you do is pull up the side you want to work on and kind of collapse it back onto itself like a worm here. And you can just stick it in the ground, but I decided I wanted to lay it like that since I don't want to hurt my plants. And you can see everything's doing for situation really well. These are all out of my uh, hydroponic seed starting kit. Uh, this is bok choy, um, some sorrel. Actually this, look at this. This is supposed to be plain sorrel. It looks like it got some crossing with some red vein. So that's like a hybrid, that's cool. Um, this is yod fa. This is celtus. This looks like it's molding. It's not. This is that, it looks like lettuce, but it grows with stem and you eat the stem. Uh, there's some azuna mustard, purple lady bok choy. Again, I'm pretty sure that's a yod fa. And there's a whole buttload of stuff under there. But you can see that the top of the soil is wet, right? Now, let me talk about some of the features I really like with this. If it gets really warm out, you see how the end of this cinches up with this little holder here? Well, what you can do is you open this, fold it over, and cinch it back down, and you hold the ends open so that you can get an airflow through it. Um, the poly, like I said, if we look at it, and you can see this is really easy to do when you want to work. And you can just basically collapse about half. But the only thing I don't like is that string, especially when you have one hand like this with the camera, uh, you can drag it across and grab one of your plants. So uh, I might come up with a way to manage that a little bit better. Um, again, this is the uh, Celtus. This is some chard, perpetual spinach chard is what that's called. Whole buttload of stuff down there. Mizuna mustard. And right now, I don't know about you, and there was some variance in these plants. And some of these plants, I'm surprised they're doing as well as they are because when I pulled them out of the seed starting system, I got distracted. I threw them in a bucket and they sat there for over a day in a bucket on top of each other in the dark. Uh, so they, they were not treated with kid gloves and they've come around pretty good. If anything, I'd say maybe we're having some nutrient deficiency or getting a little bit hot under the poly. It's been pretty warm lately. Um, I think this is actually 
from that abuse I was talking about. But guys, if you've never grown red or pink Mizuna mustard, man, you got to try this. This is just unbelievable flavor. I wouldn't want to eat a bowl of this, <laughs> but this added to a salad gives it a hit, a, a, a spice, a bitterness. It's just amazing. Now my morning snack there. I'll take those young leaves off of that chard right there and it should do well. It's been warm enough lately that I probably could pull these off during the day and only put them on at night. But I'm just going to keep running them. Anyway, again, this two-footer is the giant size. The other size, I don't know if they call it small or whatever, is a little bit lower, and it's 18 inches wide. I probably wouldn't get anything but these unless you had a very specific reason. I was hoping that maybe I could, because they have other options. They have the poly, the fleece, and they have one that's basically a shade cloth and one that's just a mesh that lets almost all the sun through to keep bugs off in the, in the uh, fall or the, the summer. And so you have four seasons worth of uh, options on these. They all sell in the $20 range. I think these are like 22, don't, you know, don't crucify me if I'm wrong, but 22 and these are like 26, the poly's a little bit more. Um, so I was hoping that these would be kind of my uh, silver bullet on zucchinis this year but i can't see a, a full-size zucchini really fitting under there uh so a lot of people use row covers with zucchinis and they use what you know what most people would do here is make your own arches and then just buy the material and it's cheaper that way you can do more that way faster i might come up with like a box system or something uh using a uh, mesh for zucchini and do like one big clump of zucchini in one of these corners but I don't want to do row covers like that. I'm not a farmer. I'm a gardener. And that's why I think this is a, a really great solution for a lot of y'all that are gardeners. If you do that, well, then I've got my arches. Then I put my material out. Now the wind's blowing. Now I'm trying to control it. I got to pin it all down. Now I want to work on it. Now I got to pull it up. If I'm a farmer, I mean, that's just my life. If I'm a gardener, that just seems like a big pain in the ass. When I saw the way these close up or open up on the ends, the way you can collapse them down and you see even with one hand even. I think these are great. So uh, these are definitely a recommendation uh, if you have need of them. And again, the only thing to consider is unless you're getting a lot of rain, like you can see how dry that looks. Now, the truth is right there, it's plenty moist. It's actually, I would say, a little drier, but probably more optimum right now because forget you can see how much rain we got. It's just soaked over there. Uh, but when you water with the poly, you're going to have to pull back. Or with the fleece, unless you're doing something, you can just leave it in place and you can just uh, mist on top of it or use whatever watering solution. Now, of course, if you're using drip or something, uh, then it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, check these things out. They're made by Tierra Garden. Uh, I went through, got, I guess, about 20 different options on different sites, different types of cold frame options, just tons of different things. Bang for the buck flexibility, ease of use, and then storage ability, and then taking the total budget in consideration. These were the best. My gut is in my climate, that's all I'm ever gonna need with the type of crops I'll grow in the winter. And I'm also thinking that these will help me get peppers, tomatoes, etc., off to a bit of an early start where there's that little bitty chance. Oh, it might freeze. And then all your new plants die. Um, just having that should be enough when you get those edgy, you know, last freezes of the season to get us through. Anyway, hope you guys, you know, enjoyed that review and uh, hope you guys enjoy what is beginning to happen out here. This place by summer is going to be just amazing.